What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to continue building out our MP3 player with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to work on our MP3 player, probably knock out the rest of these buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video we set up the main sort of interface for this MP3 player. We've got these buttons, the only one that works right now is the play button, I think. And uh, we can add a song. We've already got one in there. We could put another one. And we could toggle between them. And we could play. And we could switch. And oh, the stop button works too. So uh, that's as far as we've got now. So now we want the forward button and the backward button and uh, probably the pause button to work. And I think that's what we're going to look at in this video. So uh, let's start out with the pause button because this one's a little bit tricky. So let's head over to our code and let's scroll down to where our buttons are located. And here's our pause button. And let's just give this a command of pause. So now we can come up here and create this pause function. I'm just gonna put it underneath stop. So let's say uh, pause and unpause the current song. And let's define pause. So Pygame comes with a function for pausing and unpausing, and it's just pygame.mixer.music.pause. And also unpause. So, so this will pause and this will unpause. So when we click the button, we need to know whether or not the song has been paused yet or not, right? So has the song been paused? If so, unpause it, right? If it's not paused, then go ahead and pause it. So that's the basic logic we want. So we need to actually pass in the ability to know whether the song has been paused or not from outside of this function. So let's create a little variable. Let's say create global pause uh, variable. And so this is going to be global because we need to use it inside and outside of this function. So let's just call it paused. And then let's set this paused equal false. So when the program runs, right, when we start the program, it starts at the top and, and just comes straight down. And it will see this and create this variable called paused. This is a global variable. We can use it inside and outside of different functions. And then the program will set this to false. Why? Well, when the program first runs, the song isn't paused, right? So we'll set this to false. Now, we need to be able to grab whether or not this paused is true or false inside of this function. So we need to pass it in when we click the button. So let's pass it in as, as is paused, right? And then now this is paused, we need to pass in the command when we click the pause button. So let's come down here to the pause button. And we gave this a com command pause, we need to pass in using a lambda that variable. So whenever we pass in things in a function with a button with Kinter, we have to use lambdas. You usually don't have to with regular Python, but with Kinter for some reason, I've talked about this in past videos, we have to create a lambda. So L-A-M-B-D-A -A, colon, and then, oops, and let's pass in that paused variable. So this is a lowercase l, it's not a capital L, Sublime just does this. So do not put capital L like that. It has to be lowercase. And this paused variable is, let's come back up here, just whatever this thing has been set to. In this case, it's false. So false is being is being passed into our pause variable with this variable right here. So let's set that up. So let's go paused equals is underscore paused. And we want this paused variable to be used inside and outside of this function, so let's go global paused. So basically, when the program starts, we're setting pause to false. Then when we click the button, we're passing this false into this function with this variable, which is then turned into this variable, which is then, which is global, so now this outside will also become whatever this 
ends up becoming, right? So right now it's just false. So, okay, that's kind of confusing, but this will become more apparent as we work through here. So now we need to decide whether paused is true or false. If paused is true, then we need to unpause. If paused is false, we need to pause. So let's create a, a basic if statement. So let's go if paused. And this is a very short if statement. We don't have to say if paused equals true. Just calling paused is like saying is paused true, right? So we don't have to, normally you would go if paused equals true. And that probably works, but the convention is just call if paused because if paused is true, this will become, this if statement will be true. If it's not, then it'll be false. So, so if it's true, what do we need to do? Well, if it's true that it's been paused, that means the song has been paused. Well, if it's been paused, we need to unpause it, right? So let's unpause it. So let's copy this and tab this over. Be sure to use the tab key, not the space key. So we need to unpause this, right? Well, once that's been unpaused, we need to then change paused, P-A-U-S-E-D, to false. So it's true. it was true, the song was paused. We unpaused the song, and then we turned pause to false, meaning the, the song has been unpaused, which then out here will be set to false so that the next time we click the button, we, we click it correctly and we, we take the right action. So, all right, if it's paused, unpause it, else, pause it, right? So if it's unpaused, right? If, it has, if the song hasn't been paused, then we wanna pause it. So it's Pygame Mixer Music, pause. And then again, we need to now turn, uh, we need to now change paused to true, right? So now this out here will be true. So then the next time we click the button, true will get passed into here, which means the song is paused and then we'll unpause it. Set it to false. The next time we click it, false will get passed into here. So this will be, you know, done and it will pause it. Right? Makes sense. Hopefully, I kind of butchered that. It's Monday morning. My logic is uh, not strong this morning, but uh, that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. So Python player .py. and let's bring this over and let's add a song. And we can pick any song. We can play it. Pause. Unpause. So, okay, that's looking good. Now, when we run this thing, up here we're adding one song at a time. And, you know, that's okay, but maybe you want to add a bunch of songs at the same time. How do you do that? Well, let's do that real quick. So let's come down to our menu. So let's type in add many songs to playlist. And so we can just copy this and paste it in. And for our label, let's say add many songs to the playlist. And instead of add song, let's call this add underscore many underscore songs. Okay, so let's now create that function. So let's come up here to, let's see, add song. And right underneath it here, let's add many songs to playlist. So let's define add many songs to playlist. Now we're gonna start out doing almost the same thing. So we just copy this and let's bring it down here. And instead of ask open file name, we call ask open file names. And that's really the only difference. So now instead of this, this song variable returning one song, it's gonna return a Python list of all the names that we select. So instead of replacing this stuff for one song and then inserting it into the box, we need to do that for a list. So we need to loop through that list and, uh, and do that for each one. So, and let's say loop through song list and replace uh, direct, Directory info and mp3 and add. Well, we'll just do that. So let's create a loop. So let's go for song in songs. And instead of this being song, let's call this songs plural because we're, we're returning a list of songs. So now we're going to say loop through here and say for each song in our list of songs, what do we want to do? Well, we want to 
well, basically just do this stuff. So let's just copy that. So we want to replace that stuff and this stuff, and we also want to insert it. So uh, let's go uh, insert into playlist. So songbox.insert.end, and then we want to put in song. So, all right, that should work. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run this guy again. So add songs, come down here to add many songs. And now we can click the shift key and arrow up to you know highlight as many as you want, or you can drag and hold the mouse button, whatever. Now we click open and boom, each of these gets added. And that's cool, so we can play this. Look at that. That, pause. Stop, okay. So we are coming right along. And this video is getting a little bit long and these two buttons, the forward and back button, they're gonna take probably 10 minutes or so to knock out. They're a little bit complicated, but not, not too bad at all. Well, it's really simple. It just takes a few minutes to explain it. So I think we'll leave that to the next video, but man, we are coming right along here and uh, pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which I really appreciate because it really helps the channel out, guys. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So they pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.